I've been suffering with a crippling migraine the past few days, which meant A. I haven't been able to do much of anything, and B. I was at home when Omnivira released his Shin Godzilla afterword video. In short, Omniviewer's take on Shin Godzilla is that it values the infrastructure of Tokyo, and by extension Japan, over the people in it. Obviously, go watch his video to get all the details. I do have my differing opinions on some of Omniviewer's takes regarding this thesis. The idea that people are rarely focused on, I believe is countered by shots of evacuations and especially the firefighter shouting for help at the start of the film. And it could be argued that the point of view of the film, i.e. government officials dealing with a disaster, may inadvertently create a sense of dehumanising detachment from the boots on the ground experiences of the situation. Hence why I think the firefighter and other such scenes were added into the film. But the more I think about Omniviewer's idea, the more it does have a ring of truth to it. It also makes what I said about the inserted ideas of Shin Godzilla more substantial. Thanks to my watching of The Days on Netflix, I know that any translation of the governmental offence of the 2011 disaster was rubbish. Go watch my most recent ramble video for more on that. But going off the idea the film translated presumed events, I stated Shin Godzilla did well at essentially copying real life, then botched its messaging for how events should have been handled. Going with Omniviewer's assertion, all the decisions made and not made by the old government are heavily influenced by people's opinions, be they in the government or the public, which the film decides are mostly slow and wrong. This includes that helicopter scene, which I break down in my A Fractured Diamond video. Omniviewer provides food for thought in that anyone complaining about actions not being taken because of the two people in the scene should we consider the value of those two people's lives? While that is a discussion to be had, I was more concerned in showing how ludicrous the situation was, and how it shouldn't have been a thing at all. By contrast, the nerd crew are presented as objective ideasmen, who only concern themselves with the job at hand, which Shin Godzilla shows to be quick, efficient, and correct which again leads to the bonkers conclusions they reach regards their method of defeating Godzilla. That entire final battle was bloody stupid, and I gave my reasonings as to why it all ended up the way it did. With Omniviewer's interpretation, it makes much more sense why the battle happened the way it happened, i.e. public transport and big company skyscrapers are more effective than all the guns and bombs in Japan combined. <sighs> so bloody stupid. And of course that bit with the radiation levels climbing and Yagachi continuing on regardless reinforces the lack of importance for human life. Funnily enough, I was going to include Yagachi's speech to the soldiers before the final fight as another example of humanising Shin Godzilla. However, after having re-watched that scene, I found the wording to be interesting. Operation Yashiori will be dangerous. The risk of radiation exposure could result in both sickness and death. I cannot promise that all of you will make it back. But know that your work will matter. The future of Japan is now in your hands. Protect it. The future of Japan. Protect it. The more you look at it, the more it really does look like an anti-humanist, pro-industrial film. Which begs the question, does it work as a Godzilla film? No. No it does not. Take the motivation for Goro Maki's actions. Industrial pollution caused his wife to die, leading him to go on a bit of an anti-nuclear bender, leading to his creation of Godzilla. In another Godzilla film, this would absolutely be an anti-nuclear, anti-industrial message. 
Given our new insight, this backstory could easily be interpreted as the human factor being the cause of the disaster, not the industrial action. Godzilla films, amongst others, have traditionally put the blame for monsters making home visits on humanity as a whole, and that we need to make some changes, usually to work better with nature and the environment. The Monsterverse does that mostly well with the whole balancing message. Shin Godzilla, on the other hand, is basically saying we need to become less human and more industrialised. That, I believe, is not in the spirit of the franchise. Does Shin Godzilla even count as a Godzilla film anymore?